Welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. This season we're filming in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. I'm here at The Natural Bridge in Natural Bridge, Virginia. And now we're in the kitchen. Um, Godfrey, what you got cooking? To the berry knocker. Berry knocker. Welcome to the story of cooking. Today we're going to be talking about movie night and I have invited my husband Evan because he and I are big movie night fans. Hello. And we're going to be talking about the first movie night that we did together when we were dating, right? Yes. So the first movie night we had was Dr. Zhivago, which is a love story about Russia during the war. A lot of um, heartache and yearning and it was a good way to start a movie night, right? Sure. It was, uh, I've never seen it before, and you said it was one of your favorite movies. Um, so I was not forced to watch it, but we were early on in our dating relationship, and I was willing to do whatever. So there it is. That sounds horrible. Ah, sorry. Okay. But, uh, well, let's get started on the recipe, and then we can talk more about that later. So the first thing we're going to do, we have, we've actually already done the first step for you. Uh, we have boiled four russet potatoes, and what's... What you need to know about this is that you actually don't just boil them in water. You boil them with bay leaves and peppercorns for flavor. So I'm going to go drain them. Okay. So we are going to peel these potatoes too, so it's easier to do it when they're hot. So don't burn yourself, but drain the water and then peel them. Always comes out here. You want to help me? Sure thing. Okay. Where am I putting the peels? Um, set them aside. Setting aside. <laughs> we'll clean. We'll worry about cleanup later. Okay. Just peel them as much as you can. If you leave a little bit on there, that's fine. Not a big deal. So why you didn't like Dr. Shivago? Is that what you're telling well, me? Well, I'm not. This I don't want to get a lot of angry moves. women out there, but uh, <laughs> it, the way I saw the ver the, the movie. Um, everyone talks about how it's a great love affair and romantic and a tragedy. Basically, what I saw was a family guy leave his wife and children for some uh, woman who continually through the movie has different love affairs and leaves a wake of broken hearts uh, in her path and then dies in some oh coal gosh. mine or something somewhere. <laughs> but that's but other than that, great cinematography. Uh, <laughs> Beautifully shot, uh, costumes, acting. But it's so, got it's everything. It's got love, it's got war, it's got heartache, it's got happiness. It's, it's set in like winter in Russia. Russian Revolution, yes. Yeah, the Bolsheviks. Yes. Okay, so we are making a mess, but other than that, we're going to mash these potatoes. We can do that. With the masher. We're going to add one egg yolk to them, and you want to let it cool a little bit. Before you add the egg yolk, because you don't want to cook it, but it's cool enough, so we can add the egg yolk. How's my mashing skills? Good. You want to really mash it up. Okay. The recipe that I took inspiration from to make this actually said to rice, use a ricer to rice this, but a masher works just as well. So incorporate that egg yolk in there. And we're going to add a cup of, we have sour cream. You can use Curtain Fresh. Either way to the mixture. It'll make it easier for you to mash as well. And. I'm move out of your way a little bit. I know, I'm getting in your way, sweetie. Nope, it's okay. okay. Just don't and lemon. Squeeze the lemon in there and run it. Cup your fingers underneath it so you don't get any seeds. So, what other movie? Tell everyone what other movie nights we've done. Let's see. I haven't had much choice in many of them. We did. That is not true. Yeah. The second one we did was Godfather. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. The first time I ever cooked for you. I made uh, spaghetti and meatballs. It was I good. Mean, uh, All right, I'll do this. Okay. I can't do two things at once. No, tell the world yeah. about our other movie nights. What else did we do? Uh, Sound of Music when we got home from um, our honeymoon in Germany and France. Oh, that was good. Uh, that was good. And um, I think we did a. Game of Thrones movie theme kind of night, one of the opening season. Medieval Feast. Yes, All which right. was very good. Apology for one second. I'm going to put butter in a pan. I'm using a cast iron skillet. Just needs to be a saute pan. 
and we're gonna saute our onions and our mushrooms. And I'm sorry, I'm nursing a cold a little bit, so I'm drinking tea. That's really why I'm here, because she oh, can't gosh. talk as much as uh, normal. That is not true. many husbands will appreciate. But anyway, on to uh, <laughs> movie nights. Uh, let's see, what else did we do? I don't know what that means. Did, we did a, um, a samurai movie night, I believe, or... Uh-huh. Yes, else? you're really big into obscure... What? I, I don't know what movies? I'm saying. Every, <laughs> Evan is, like, obsessed with movies, so... Uh, he just uh, he, he's watched every movie that was ever made, I think, which is kind of annoying. But in every movie he talks about, he's like, "This is the best movie in the well, whole entire world." Best movies for different genres. So okay, um, well that's true. I can't remember what we watched for. I think we started watching sh the miniseries Shogun for Sam right now. That was good. And that then, was good. Uh, I tried to get you to watch a kung fu movie for Chinese food night. You wouldn't do it. Not really into kung fu. No, um, some of these Saturday afternoon greats. But uh, I think we, no, we also did a Southern Hospitality movie. Southern nice. Hospitality movie? I think that's the name of the movie, too. Um, oh. And. Uh, Wasn't it Oh Shenandoah uh, that we watched? It was something in the Shenandoah Valley, I can't remember. We made fried chicken. Yes. And then we also, but then we did Gone with the Wind, too. Yes, Gone yes. with the Wind. A lot of Southern themes there. But uh, I don't I know, we've why. been trying to come up with, oh yes, we're going to do a, our next one will be the uh, uh, India or something for Gandhi. So we're hitting all the, uh, the themes there. Okay. Um, I have a mixture of mushrooms. I have some baby bellas. I have some shiitake. I have some oyster mushrooms. You can use whatever kind of mushrooms you like. I don't think I need all of these. This recipe kind of makes a lot. It makes a lot more than for two people. However, I do eat a lot, so I probably can eat for three people. But um, it calls for a pound of mushrooms. Sarah literally will eat the same meal that I will eat when we go out to eat. Same size, same size steak, everything. Um, she burns it off because she's a little bowl of energy, but uh, she does. <laughs> You're sweet. Okay. Thank you. So why don't you start on our crab mixture? Sure. What am I doing? Here, let me move all this over here. Grab that big bowl mm -hmm. and. You're going to add the crab okay. and brandy. This recipe calls for brandy, which is delicious. Okay. And the seasonings, okay. which this is not a seasoning. This is Parmesan for later. It's cayenne and salt and pepper. Okay, so just dump the whole crab in here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you can use whatever kind of, um, oh, sorry guys. You can use whatever kind of um, seafood you want. I like crab. You can use shrimp. We went through Scouts. the crab to make sure there's no shells, right? Yes. Evan had a project earlier. That was Locate fun. the shells. Um, yeah, because when you buy a lump crab in the store, it, it can have shells in it, for sure. And that's not Any pleasant order, to bite in. Any order you want No, just mix it all together. Some more butter. All right, and then you're also going to add a cup of bechamel. Just kind of eyeball it. Just get it wet. I made the bechamel ahead of time and um, all bechamel is, it's really easy. It's um, you make a roux out of butter and flour and then you add cream. And I like to add salt and pepper. Um, white pepper's good because it kind of keeps that pretty white color. If you add white pepper, I didn't add white pepper. Um, but then I also like to add nutmeg. Okay, these look like they're pretty close. Uh, and um, more of this? How much more do I need to put in this? How, well, how, I, don't, I didn't see what you did. I put in about uh, two ladles. Nah, yeah, throw another one in there. Okay. Yeah, plenty. I love bechamel because it's cream and butter, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. I'm going to let you help me with this. Okay. We want this to go in there. And this is really heavy, so we're fast. All right, go ahead. No, scoop. Oh. Just throw the mushrooms and the onions into the crab mixture. Try to get as much as you can. By the way, we normally don't cook like this at home. I'm not allowed anywhere near the kitchen other than to uh, take out garbage normally. Okay, whatever. That's not true. I'm kidding. That's horrible to say. Your um, spaghetti and meatballs are really good. Thank you. Uh, continue to mix now? 
Yes. Okay, so now you're going to add the crab mixture with the mushrooms and the onions to the bottom of each ramekin. Okay. And you don't want to make them completely full, probably, I don't know, three-fourths of the way up because okay. we're going to add the potato mixture to the top. Very good. <laughs> make sure it covers the bottom. Yep. Right. Yep, yep. Just scoop a big, really just plop it on. You can do it like this, too. Expediate the process. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to top it with some Parmesan cheese. Maybe some salt and pepper. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't know how well you seasoned this. Did you taste it? No. <laughs> probably needs a little salt. Maybe that's why you're not allowed in the kitchen. <laughs> probably is one of the reasons, but he could probably use a little salt. Okay, no problem, no problem. You did, you did a great job. It actually looks, it looks wonderful. Okay, so just kind of smooth it out, pat it down. I can do that. That oh. one's a little, that's okay. And then we're going to take the potato mixture, like I said before, and just put it on the top. You can make it as chunky or smooth as you like. Kind of do it around here. All right, so once we've got that all covered, covered-ish, it looks a little rustic, that's fun. Um, sprinkle some of the Parmesan. Parmesan. Oops, what was that? Crazy bay leaf. Hmm. Sprinkle some of the Parmesan over top. And I don't think the Russians cook with a lot of cheese, but I think it adds a nice crust. Right? Sure. It's our Italian spin on it. Cheese is always good. And then we're just going to put that in a 325 degree oven for about 35 minutes. And while that's cooking, we're going to make some Russian twig cookies for dessert. Sounds good. Okay, Evan, we're ready to make some Russian twig cookies, which are very good for a winter Russian movie because you sprinkle them with some confectioner sugar and it looks like winter. Oh, great. Yes. Dr. Shivago in the house. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is preheat my oil because that needs to get up to 375 because we actually don't bake these cookies, we fry them. So you're going to be in charge of the wet ingredients. I'm going to be in charge of the dry ingredients. I have right. flour, baking powder, and cinnamon. I'm done. Now it's your turn. <laughs> um, you're going to take two eggs. Okay. Crack them. Put them in the pan or bowl. Excuse yes. me. I'll help you out. Oh. Got a shell. No problem. Okay. Don't get any shells. Okay. And then you're going to take butter, which has been softened. All of it. Yep. All of it. Throw it in there. And we're going to beat it with a hand mixer until it's pale yellow. You know how to use one of these? Nope. Yep. This is the first time I'm using it, so what do I do? Turn it on. Just like that. And just beat it until it's all incorporated. It should get to a pale yellow after it's been beat. It usually takes about two minutes or so. Why don't you turn it up a little? So now we're going to add our sugar, which is about three tablespoons or so. Beat that. Keep beating. It's getting Ooh. pale yellowish. We're going to add our brandy. We have two recipes with brandy today. And I guess you could use any kind of liquor you like, but brandy is really good in desserts, so. Oh, I can smell it. You can use the can. All right. So I'm going to slowly, I'm going to mix this dry ingredients together. And I'm going to slowly add them into Evan's mixture as he continues to beat. Do you want to just turn it up a little bit? Or no, because if I stick this in, it's going to go everywhere if it's turned up. Do you want to turn it down? No, just keep doing what you're doing. Get it in there. See how it kind of mm -hmm. flies everywhere? So here we go. All of it in the pan. Keep saying pan. Bowl. All of it in the bowl. You can stop. I'm going to get in there with my hands. Because ideally, with this recipe, you want it to chill for two hours, so it kind of firms up, sets, sets up really well. Um, the thing that would be classic Russian would be to make them into little twisty things, um, just because it looks prettier. But we're not going to do that. We're going to not chill it, forego that, and just make them into strips. But they have to be chilled to kind of twist them and make them look pretty. But I'm sure they'll be delicious either way. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way here. Okay. 
just kind of, you're fine. Yeah, actually, can you take all of the bowls and just put them in the sink? Sure. That'd be good. Because we're going to need some space to cut these cookies out. Uh, do you need the sugar here? Or no? Nope, I don't need any of it. Okay. Take it away. I need the, that. That's it. No problem. Okay, so you want to kind of form it into a ball so it's easy to kind of pat out so we can cut it and make our twig cookies. See, it's kind of soft now. If you if you refrigerate it, obviously it'll firm up, and it's easier to cut and roll. Can I move this one? Just move it over there, because okay. I might get stuff off my hands. Okay, so our oil needs to be about 375. You can use a um, thermometer to check on it. It's not there yet. Just drop some dough in there. Does see it doesn't sizzle? Hmm. Yeah. So if we drop something in there right now, it's not going to fry. So just keep turning it up. In the meantime, you know what the easiest thing to do? What's that? Probably make it like a square and then cut it into strips. Hmm. Like little twigs. And the, um, the classic Russian way to do would be to cut a slit. I don't know if it'll work because they're not chilled. But cut a slit like halfway up and then twist them. You know what? It actually twisted pretty well, right? Yeah, it looks good. All right, it looks like our oil's about up to temperature, so I'm just going to drop them in. Could have been a little hotter, but good enough. Okay, you want to do that part for me, okay, and I'll just keep trying. Cut for you. How long do you want them? And just cut a strip across. Yes, and then in half. Yep. And then twist. Once again, everybody gets to watch my knife skills. Why are you doing it with your left hand? Because you're in my way. It's okay. And you want the little legs so you can twist them? Um, whatever you want, babe. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay, I'll twist. You cut. So you just want to fry them until they're cooked and brown. I'm only going to do a few because my oil is struggling here to um, get up to heat. So we're going to keep cutting and frying, and then we're going to transfer the fried twig cookies over to a cookie sheet lined with paper towels to soak up the extra grease. So when we get back, we're going to work on our Russian side dish. Okay. Okay, Evan, we are ready to cook our mushroom side dish. Okay. And again, we're using mushrooms, but I love mushrooms. We eat a lot of mushrooms in our house. So that's why we're eating two dishes with mushrooms. These are just baby portobello mushrooms. You can use any type of mushrooms that you like. Um, we're going to start again by salting mushrooms with a little butter. And you're going to work on the gravy that goes over the mushrooms. Okay. I said I was going to add mushrooms. Actually, the first thing I'm going to add are chopped scallions the pan and kind of saute those first. Getting things backwards today. It must be the cold. I'm just here to distract you as well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after we make this Russian dish, you realize we have to watch Dr. Shivago again. Unless you have some uh, other Russian movie we can watch. From Russia with Love, James Bond. Oh, that's actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Romance, action, war, all the things that Dr. Zhivago has. Heartache. Mm. Not for James. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to continue to saute. You are going to take the butter okay. and the flour, and you're going to mash it into a bowl and make kind of a roux. Okay. And these will take a little bit of time, at least five minutes or so, because you want them to kind of get soft. They are going to be baked at the end, but you need more butter. This is homemade butter. Really? Mm-hmm. Made with a mason jar. Mm. Did Shake. you do that this morning when you were out milking the cows? <laughs> and, uh... Ha ha. Okay. Anything else I need to add to this, babe? No. Actually, actually, let's add some salt and pepper. Okay. Why not? Sure. Season it up. So you see, we kind of have a paste going on here, like a roux, like you were making a bechamel. Going to kind of work the same way, actually. Mm-hmm. All right, these look pretty good. I'm going to add some salt and pepper just to season them up a little bit. Okay. How's this not look? I'm not going to add, actually, you know what, I'm not going to add pepper, because you put enough pepper in there, it looks like pepper roux. Anyway, I okay. Got a, got a little heavy-handed with Look the pepper. That. That's okay. I like pepper. Pepper's good. All right, so add that to the mushroom mixture. Put that aside. Mix that in. 
and then we're going to add our other ingredients, which are sour cream and cream. These are essentially just mushrooms and sour cream sauce, which mm. I, I just love the taste of mushrooms, so works for me. Let's turn it down a little bit. Add the sour cream in. A lot of, um, when I was doing research for um, this episode in Russian recipes, I noticed that there was a lot of creme fraiche used. So you could add creme fraiche as well. I'm just adding sour cream because it's easier for people to find. Sour cream and heavy cream. Cream, cream, cream. All right, that looks ready to go. We're going to put it in a casserole dish. Excuse me. Just put it on the bottom of your casserole dish. And then we're going to layer it. Look at all of that goodness. Hmm. All right, we should have used Small. more mushrooms. Oh, well, it'll work. It'll just cook faster in the oven. So just kind of cover the bottom of the pan and sprinkle it with cheese. You can use whatever cheese you want. Apparently you wanted cheddar. I like cheddar. <laughs> this makes it the southern Russian dish. Okay. And you just throw it in a 350 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes and that's it. It's done. So I'm going to do that. We're going to get our cookies ready, we're going to get our crab stew out of the oven, and then we're going to plate up and watch uh, either a James Bond movie or a Dr. Zhivago. We haven't decided yet. We'll see who wins. Everything is out of the oven, so we're ready to taste, plate, and go watch the movie. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. So what we have not done yet is we're going to sprinkle just a little bit of more cayenne on the top, just because it looks pretty, and I like things spicy. Yes, you do. He doesn't so much, but this is my recipe, so that's what we're doing. All right. And what do we need to do with the cookies? Do you remember? Uh, powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okie doke. Like winter snow in Dr. Zhivago. Oh. See, now we have to watch Dr. Zhivago. I can't remember if there's... snowing there's, in the kitchen. I think there's snow in a James Bond I part of the movie as well. I think there is. No. No, I don't think there is. It's decided. It's Dr. Zhivago. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. All right, I will give you some mushrooms. Okay, here's, here's my plate. Mm -hmm. And they've just been, I mean, they're already cooked, so you don't have to, you just got to get the top brown. Thank there you. Go. Some for me. Take a little. Right, you say yours over there. Okay. We'll taste from the same plate. All right, dig in. Tell me what you think. This is always my favorite part. taste the mushrooms. Tell, tell me about it, Evan. What mm. do you taste? I taste the crab. I taste the mushrooms. Cayenne pepper. I did not. I uh, could use a little bit more salt, probably. Um, I didn't put in enough salt, but very good. It's like a seafood mushroom shepherd's pie. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So. Oh, there you go. There you go. And these mushrooms. Taste the mushrooms. I liked them. I thought they were good. Mm. Mm. Mushrooms are awesome. Yes. You can't go wrong with mushrooms and cream. And a twig cookie. Okay. Mm, very good. Just They're kind of a like a funnel cake. Yep. Now we just need our cognac and vodka and we're ready to go for All a right. Russian meal. Here you go, Evan. Here is your crab stew. I'll take the one that you've already eaten off of. You always give me so much. Well, I'll thank eat you. off yours anyway later. Okay. Twig cookie. All right. We're set. Evan, thank you so much as always. Thank you so much for joining us today on the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. Until next time, keep the story going.